race of the wild card spot. Always a team to provide dazzling offensive excitement and last minute dramatics, the Raiders were meeting their match in the Colts. The game was a classic and took those who watched on an emotional roller coaster ride that left fans, players, and coaches drained when it was over. This is the way it happened. Right from the starting gun, there were fireworks as Oakland's Carl Garrett took the opening kickoff on the one and burned it back 40 yards. But there was to be no scoring on this series, or until late in the first quarter for that matter, mostly because of number eight Ray Guy, whose booming kicks he putted twice in the first period, each time for 51 yards, kept Baltimore pinned deep in their own territory. There is no doubt Guy is the premier putter in all of football, perhaps the best ever, and his value to the Raiders is immense. The Colts never did extricate themselves from Guy's punting barrage, but did come close on a bomb from Jones to Freddie Scott that was beautifully played by number 24, 15-year veteran Willie Brown, one of the great cornerbacks in the game. Late in the quarter, Jones was sacked by John Matusak on his own five-yard line, and Baltimore was forced to punt from deep in its end zone. The result was fine field position for the Raiders, and Kenny Stabler was quick to exploit it. Big play was provided by setback Clarence Davis, number 28, who tore over left guard and ran 30 yards for the first score of the game. Another look at this clutch play by a player who makes a habit of them shows that the little halfback from USC broke several tackles on his way to the end zone. But Oakland's 7-0 lead was short-lived. For less than two minutes into the second quarter, the snake was bitten by the Baltimore defense. Number 40, strong safety Bruce Laird, stepped in front of Mark Van Egan and streaked 61 yards for the tying touchdown. With the score knotted at seven, the defenses of both these high-caliber football teams took turns slugging it out for most of the remainder of the second quarter. Stabler was denied access to the air by a cold secondary that is not rated among the best while Burt Jones was constantly hurried and harassed by the Raiders' strong 3-4. This painful sack was just one of six the Rustin rifle would suffer on this bright Christmas Eve afternoon. With both offenses impotent for much of the second quarter, Oakland Stabler was undershooting some of his passes on this day, which saw temperatures reach 51 degrees and the condition of the grassless field good and dry. Then with seven minutes left in the half, Burt Jones and the Baltimore attack began moving the ball for the first time, going from their own 20 to the Raider 19. But there the rally ended when on third down, number 32, Jack Tatum, just missed picking one off. <laughs> Baltimore.
Baltimore's Ted Marchabroda called on Tony Linhart, who delivered a 36-yard field goal that put the Colts ahead by three. Now, with less than two minutes left in the half, the Raiders came roaring downfield on the arm of the snake. Mark Van Egan brought the ball to the Baltimore 23, and Oakland had plenty of time to go for six. But with a golden opportunity to score, Clarence Davis lost the ball, and the Colts recovered. Closely contested first half ended with John Madden's Raiders on the short end of a 10-7 score. The Offenders. On Oakland's first series, Stabler let go with a bomb to Cliff Branch, who had raced ahead of Nelson Muncie, number 31. Play was good for 41 yards and had taken a great leaping catch by the all-pro receiver from Colorado. Branch was ruled down. But here the Oakland defense got tough, very tough. And on fourth and 20, David Lee went back to punt. For the second time in three weeks, the result was disastrous for the Colts. In the season's next to last game, Detroit had beaten Baltimore on a blocked Lee punt. This time, the Raiders recovered at the Colts' 16. But the effect was just as damaging for three plays later, Stabler off a pump fake, found Dave Casper all alone over the middle and sidearmed the ball to him for his second touchdown catch of the game. Oakland now led this seesaw battle 21 to 17. Colts and Raiders had combined for 21 points in under four minutes, four points more than they had scored in the entire first half. But the pace slowed momentarily, however, as neither team could score on its next possession, although each did move into the other side of the field. Freddie Scott's juggling, painful catch began the Colts' drive with a 19-yard gain. And a repeat reveals what a remarkable catch Scott made. Scott had a tenuous grasp on the ball at best when Monty Johnson wasted him. But Scott, who was again filling in for Roger Carr, has sure hands. And his great catch makes it hard to believe that on the very next play, he didn't appear to have any hands at all. Though the Colts reached the Raider 35 and Oakland made it to the Baltimore 37, neither could score, but early in the fourth quarter, the Colts began another point deluge. Jones passed brilliantly on the drive, working number 35, Glenn Dowdy, outside, and Lydell Mitchell in between the Oakland pass coverage zones. With 41 yards worth of completions, Jones had the Raiders rocked back on their heels, and after four runs gained 28 more yards, Jones went for the touch with another pass. Though Lester Hayes appears to be exalting after a good play, he was actually reacting to a pass interference call made against him that gave Baltimore a first down on the Oakland one-yard line. The Raiders, Monty Johnson in particular, did not quite see eye-to-eye -eye with the officials. 
or the penalty set up Baltimore for an almost certain six points. But the points did not come easily. The fired-up Raider defense did not give an inch on three cracks from the one-yard line. And even on the fourth, Ron Lee was not sure he had made it either. Lee had made it, however. Baltimore led 24 to 21, and the race was on again. You really gotta hand it to your hands. They get more grease and grind than they can stand. But they stay right by your side at your command. You really owe your hands a helping hand. So lather up with Paraxo, shake hands with Paraxo, unclean with Paraxo, shake hands with Paraxo, lather up. I'm going to take the worst of these junk cars, give it a showroom finish using no wax with this incredible new product, Starbright. In 30 minutes, under a scorching sun and without muscle, I'm going to give this car a dazzling shine that'll last up to a year. Starbright. It's like getting a paint job for $3.95. And you should see what it does to new cars and boats. Starbright's Super Car Care line is available wherever automotive products are sold. Hi, I'm Dan Rather of CBS News and 60 Minutes. One of the things that we know that makes 60 Minutes work is the caring about the story. Every reporter, every person involved with our broadcast cares, really cares about getting the facts straight, treating the material fairly. would take the Raiders just five plays to get the touchdown back as they too were aided by a pass interference call when Nelson Muncy backed into Cliff Branch. And Oakland had a first down on the Baltimore one. Raiders, unlike the Colts, had no struggle getting into the end zone. On the next play, designated touchdown scorer Pete Banaszak, number 40, charged over the Colt goal line, and Oakland had reclaimed the lead 28-24. Now it was Baltimore's turn on the upside of the seesaw battle. They used only four plays to go 73 yards for another touchdown. The first play of the drive was a 30-yard pass to Raymond Chester. And a look from the end zone reveals how well Jones used his tight end. Waiting for number 87 to break past number 58, Bonnie Johnson. Then dropping the ball over the beaten Oakland middle linebacker. Jones now centered his attentions on running back Ron Lee, who got all of the remaining 43 yards of the drive on just three plays. The first was a 16-yard pass reception, followed by a 14-yard run around the Raider right side. Lee, a second-year man from West Virginia, has become a very valuable Colt. At 6'4", 228 pounds, he is the biggest Baltimore back but also the fastest, and he polished off the cold drive from 13 yards out. A repeat of Lee's touchdown reveals another facet of his blossoming talent. The play was designed to go off tackle, but Lee found a hole elsewhere, made a quick and decisive cut, and found an easy path to six points. This time, the teams had used only two and a half minutes to score 21 points. But Baltimore owned two of the three touchdowns and led 31 to 28. Leading by three, the Colts later had a chance to run out the clock and dethrone the defending champions. But the Raiders are just that, champions. And they made the plays on defense when they had to. 
The biggest offensive play was a second and 10 with two minutes, 17 seconds left. A 42 yard pass to superb tight end Dave Casper carried the Raiders to the Colt 14. And an end zone repeat reveals why Casper is an all pro. In the most crucial of situations, Casper had to make what most receivers consider the toughest catch of all. Looking straight back, then catching the ball as it came down directly over his head. The Raiders were now within tying field goal range, and after three line smashes, they faced a fourth and one at the Colt five-yard line, with 29 seconds left in regulation. For a time, John Madden pondered the possibility of going for the win right then and there. But if they didn't make it, their reign as champions would end by that one yard. And so with 29 ticks left, Errol Mann unlimbered his leg to try and tie the game with a 22-yard field goal. Like a man who does this sort of thing three times a day, Errol Mann pumped it through, and the game was tied 31-31, going into sudden death overtime. <laughs> Golf stabler, and the ball popped free. But the whistle had blown, and Raider guard George Beeler recovered the ball anyway. More important was the fact that Oakland now faced a third and 19 as the fifth period neared its conclusion. Branch's diving catch gained precisely 19 yards and as fifth period turned into sixth, Oakland was on the Baltimore 10. And then it was over. Only the third game in NFL history to stretch into six quarters was ended by Dave Casper's third touchdown catch of the game, 43 seconds into that sixth quarter. It was the third longest game in NFL history. The Raiders' first win in the playoff game away from Oakland and truly one of those games where it's a shame both teams can't win. For the Colts, 1977 is a memory. But it was a game that they, the Raiders, and pro football fans everywhere will remember for a long, long time. In the Raider locker room after the game, there was very little emotion. Most of it was just subdued jubilation at best. When asked why his team was so quiet, Coach Madden explained that it had been such an up and down, ebb and flow struggle that everyone had run out of adrenaline along about the middle of the fifth period. He noted that even the fans had sat in sort of a weary silence for the last five minutes of the battle. It must have been eerie. I'm Pat Summerall and I hope you'll join me the next time we present great teams, great years, great games. This portion of NFL Great Teams, Great Years, Great Games has been brought to you.